Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for March the 26th. It's a real privilege to be with you today. We're going to open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for the service that we're about to embark on, that wonderful healing service. And also as well, Lord, we ask your blessing upon the songs that are sung, the word that's presented, and the prayers that are offered. And we ask it now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to give you an invitation to our in-person service that'll be happening today at 11 a.m. We meet at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. We would love to have you join us for this service. And our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. And we're going to start off with a beautiful song, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound The saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious is that grace of dear, the hour I first
Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. so true. The Lord today wants to lift you up, and the Lord also wants to heal you. And that's where we find ourselves today when we look at the Word of God. So, Father, we ask your blessing today upon your Word. And what we're going to be sharing today from your Word, we ask that blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is a healing service. It is a time where we focus on God's power and ability to heal us in the area of physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritually, family-wise, and financially. It's a time where we stand on 1 Peter 2.24 that states that by his stripes we are healed. It's also an opportunity for God to do what he promised in Ephesians 3.20, to do exceedingly, abundantly beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. Now, the ultimate healer, of course, was Jesus Christ. And here are seven reasons why Jesus healed. First of all, he healed because he was moved with compassion. Jesus saw the afflictions and also the diseases and all the different things that mankind suffered. He said, I need to do something about it. And he did. He would move with compassion. Secondly, he healed because healing is the children's bread. And it's a wonderful promise given in the Old Testament. We find that in Mark 7, 27, where it states, Mark says that healing is the children's bread. Also as well, Jesus Christ healed to fulfill prophecy found in healing in the atonement. It says in Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes were healed. That is strictly a Old Testament scripture, but has a New Testament application. Also as well, when Jesus healed, he went to reveal his Father's glory. He says, the reason I'm healing is because the, the, the Father is glorified through this. Also as well, Jesus used healing to prove his ministry and mission. When someone came to him and Jesus healed him, he showed that God was in control and that God was going to be glorified, honored, and exalted through the healings that he did. Also as well, he healed because he was a Bible type. You know, one of the scriptures that we find in Exodus simply says this, that none of the diseases of the Lord will come upon us because the Lord is our healer. And Jesus Christ, of course, is the fulfillment of the scriptures. And because he's the fulfillment of the scriptures also as well, that means that Jesus Christ is our healer also as well. Jesus healed to destroy the works of the devil. Whenever Jesus came across a demonic entity that was bringing affliction or disease and sickness upon someone, he cast it out. I love what it says in verse John 3, 8, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So let's talk about an example of that happening. Jesus was in the area of Capernaum and uh, he came across the fact that Peter's mother-in-law was not well. And so Jesus went in and 
touched her and healed her. And the interesting thing was after she was healed, being a good Jewish mother-in-law, she served everyone dinner. And that's a perfect example of Jesus being led by compassion. Also as well, you see, when Jesus healed or when God heals, God is glorified when you are healed, whole, and made ready for service. Because all of a sudden, all those weights and sins and diseases, afflictions are off of you, and you are more mobile and more willing and ready to do the work of the Lord. God still heals today. I have seen over and over again how that God has wonderfully and marvelously healed. Also as well, healing is always God's will. That is what God wants to do in your life. He wants to heal you. Now, healing can come in two forms. It can be instantaneous and immediate, or it can happen over time. Let me share a little story. We have a guy in our church whose name is Ken. Just last week, I had a conversation with Kent, and Kent was telling me that the vertigo that he had been dealing with is now gone. And also as well, he was not able to see because of a affliction called glaucoma, but because of the Lord's goodness, now Kent is able to heal, see perfectly well. God healed him of his vertigo and his glaucoma. So God wants to heal you today. God also wants you to live eternal and abundant life. And part of that eternal and abundant life is to walk with health and prosperity. In fact, that was the prayer that uh, John gave in 3 John 2, when he says, I, pros I pray that you be in prosperity and health even as your soul prospers. Did you know that prosperity begins from the inside out? Also as well, the Lord wants you to have prosperity and health even as your soul prospers, and it begins from the inside out. Now in John chapter nine, six and seven, Jesus told a blind man, I am the light of the world. I love this story. So what does he do? He's healed him. He's, he, he, uh, having said this, he spat on the ground and then he made mud with a saliva and spread the mud over the man's eye. And then he said, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went, washed and came back seeing. Now you have to understand something. Jesus was in the temple mount at the time. And so what he was asking the man to do was nearly impossible. But the man did what Jesus said he wanted him to do, and he came back seeing. This is what we call a recreative miracle. And what I mean by a recreative miracle is simply this, that Jesus took some dust or some mud with his saliva, put the mud over the man's eyes, and told him, what I want you to do is go wash your face in the pool of Siloam, and you will be made well. And he did, and God touched him. Today, God wants to heal you. We have this wonderful exhortation in James 5, 14. If anyone among you is sick, let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them. Anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus Christ, and a prayer offered in faith will make that person well, and the Lord will raise them up, and if they've sinned, they will be forgiven. So it's now my time to pray for you, to ask God to touch you in your situation. So Father, today, we've been talking about healing. This is that moment where, Lord, you are going to heal. The first place you're going to do it is in our personal relationship with you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we are confessing our sins and we are renouncing them and we are re releasing them, Lord, to you and we are receiving your forgiveness. Lord, we want to be uh, well in our spirit and in our soul. Then, Lord, we want that to be translated to the second area, which is, of course, your provision. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That means that, Lord, you're going to supply every need according to your riches and glory. So thank you for that right now, and thank you for your healing touch. Lord, 
1 Peter 2.24 tells us that by your stripes are healed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, would you extend that healing to us? Would you release us, Lord, from all these things and heal us, Lord, in every way? That is what we're looking for today. So, Lord, we have those two wonderful promises of Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, and 1 Peter 2.24 that says, By your stripes we're healed. We are healed and we are whole. And we claim it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, isn't it great to know that the Lord is the one that heals us? And so we're going to close our time together with a song of healing. He is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our healer. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank healer today and he is healing you and making you whole. Well, I want to give you an invitation to our in-person service that will be starting today at 11 a.m. And uh, it is, of course, a healing service. And if you are not able to attend, then you can watch, of course, on Facebook Live. But if you can attend, we meet at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. And we would love to have you join us for that 11 a.m. service. Our doors open at 1045. So, Father, Thank you today for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, to spend time together. We ask that, Lord, right now, in every area of life, you would heal your people and you would restore their people, Lord, and give them victory. And we ask it now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so very much for joining me today. God bless you and have yourself a great and godly day.